This video discusses how to set exposure times with wide field fluorescence microscopy for a wide dynamic range with no saturation. We're going to demonstrate using a slide stain with four fluorescent probes. And we're going to begin with the green channel. One common problem with fluorescence microscopy is that they're bright areas or structures. And they're next to dim or weakly labeled areas, and we want to image them both. So it may be a misnomer to call the weekly area label, um, call these areas weekly labeled, because this implies there's something wrong with them. Well, actually, they are labeled great, which just they have few molecules per volume. And we do need to preserve this relationship in the images where we have a linear relationship between standing here and standing here. So the most common way people set the exposure overexposes the bright areas so that with standard linear contrast, the less bright areas are visible. However, this overexposed or blows out the bright areas. So this region here is too bright. You can't see any structure in here. This area here, you can see details. So the cameras on most microscopes have enough dynamic range to capture both the bright and the dim signals without saturating or losing anything. So the camera we're using on this microscope is 14 bits, which means that it has more than 16,000 intensity values. However, the video display in the computer only has 256 values. And so the problem is that the computer screens can't display this entire range. So if we're looking at on the bottom here, we can see sort of the schematic of it, where we have 16,000 raw data values along the bottom here, but we can only display 255 values as seen on the left. Also, our eyes can't um, distinguish more than maybe 100 um, different intensity values. And then you add color to this, and it makes it very hard for us to be able to see such a wide range. But you can set the exposure to not saturate the brightest signal, and the weaker signal will really be in the image. So in this example image, you can clearly see fine striations. And if we zoom this up, you can definitely see that. However, over here, it doesn't look like you can see much. But we can do two different types of contrast enhancements here. One is a linear contrast adjustment, which is very similar to overexposing the image. So this would be, this looks very similar to if we overexpose these pixels. However, the underlying raw data have not changed. So if we want to do quantification, we will still get the correct answer. But this clearly shows us now these find structures that are weakly labeled. We can also use a non-linear adjustment, such as a gamma curve. Now, using this gamma adjustment, we can clearly see we still have fine detail in the dim areas, and we can also see detail Sorry, fine, we can still see the fine structure in the bright areas. And in the dim areas, we can also see now adjusted into compressed into a contrast range where our eyes and the screen can handle this. If we go and zoom this up, you can clearly see this fine structure weakly labeled. And, and this is allowed as long as you explain this when you show people the images. For instance, you could say, gamma curve applied to show weakly labeled cells adjacent to bright labeled areas in the same field. All quantification performed on original linear raw data. Now we're gonna demonstrate two ways to set the exposure for taking the raw data. The first is manual. And we're gonna use the range indicator button down here to help us. So we go to the green channel, we go live, and we hit range indicator. You can see that actually at an exposure time of 160 milliseconds, this is not too bad. I'm going to just adjust the focus a little bit. 
Ah, much better focus. You see, just a few saturated pixels. But we might be tempted to want more bright signal and bring this brighter. So I'm actually going to type in, instead of dragging, say one second, 1,000 millisecond. However, this is really blown out here. And we could just adjust this. Let's just take a guess and say 160 milliseconds. Now, the danger with going with this 160 millisecond is that we do have one or just a few saturated pixels. Is that if we go to a different part of the sample where it's slightly brighter, it's going to be blown out. So, just to be safe, I'd give us a margin of error if I was going to do this manually and then put a little 140 milliseconds. So that's one way of doing it, and that's the a manual way. Another method is the percent of range automated calculation. And keep in mind that because the camera is so low noise and has such wide dynamic range, we don't have to fill the entire capacity of the camera to collect good images. So Zeiss actually has the default of this set at 30%. So what does this mean? If we look at this display curve on the bottom here, we can see our raw data along the bottom. And you can see that we're approaching 100% of the values we can have. We could, however, set this range over here in the shift button in channels to, let's say, 50%. So what that will do is it's going to try to take the brightest pixels in the image and put them at 50%. So if we hit auto exposure and then set exposure, let me show you the result. But this is the result. And you can see clearly in the curve that it's maximum pixel intensities are at about 50%. We can adjust the contrast linearly. So we're not saturating anything. So our brightest pixels are about 50%. And we could tweak in a little bit of gamma. And now you can clearly see that we see everything from the most weakly labeled, perhaps it's background, but it's for the point of this exercise, it shows you everything in, it, in this scale. And we still have an, around a dynamic range of about 8,500, which is more than enough for doing quantification across this entire field of tissue. So now that we have an exposure time for the green, we need to do the same thing for the DAPI channel. A common misconception is that nuclei need to be imaged bright to use them for segmentation. However, imaging them too bright is bad. Anytime something is saturated, its representative is too large. So it has exaggerated size. This means that neighboring objects blur together or attach together. And you can't segment them. Also, you can't get any kind of quantitative intensity measurement once you've saturated it. So it's also difficult to see blue. And I think this is another reason that people um, tend to make their DAPI or hoax images too bright. So we're going to use the same a range indicator or a different lookup table such as violet um, to distinguish this. But in this exposure time here of 100 milliseconds, we can clearly see this is too bright. You may think this is great because you can see the weaker labeled nuclei inside the tissue. But there's actually no way to know how many cells there are here because the blue has all blurred together especially in this region, all along here, these nuclei are mashed together. You can't tell them apart. But we said to aim for 70%, we hit auto exposure and say set exposure. Now, they're all within a linear range, except perhaps for this one little spot in the center. And we could then come and tweak this down manually. 
say instead of 17 milliseconds, we're going to go for so for 16 milliseconds. And that's fixed. And again, if you want a safety range, because we can see we actually have a few isolated nuclei that are very bright, we can even say that to be in a safe range in case we go to another field where the brighter will be set to 12. And that's still, we adjust, you can see if we adjust our gamma, we can clearly see all the nuclei and effects in fine detail over on the left here. So that's great. To reinforce this point, let's look at the red channel. You may think this is great because these isolated cells are really bright and you say, wow, I want to see those fine dendrites like structures. But actually, because they're saturated, they are too large. So again, auto exposure, let's go for 50% because these are isolated, but you can actually see these weakly labeled cells in here beautifully. Set exposure. So if we go live, zoom this up. Stop the live. You can now see there's very fine structures. We can clearly see details closer to the nucleus in the cell body. And these weaker cells really are represented in the image. If we do a gamma adjustment so that we can see them, but for quantification, of course, they are really there within a linear range. And you can see over here on the left that we still have this very bright area where we can see details. The main point is that by not saturating, we are actually getting more information about these fine cells over on the right. And I'm not even going to preview the Alexa Floor 647. I'm just going to come over here and say we want to be in the 50% range. Actually, let's preview it just so you get more, a quick idea of what's going on here. Way too bright. Auto exposure, set exposure, and let's turn on all our channels. Hit the snap button to take a single picture. You can see everything here is within a nice linear range. And we can adjust our contrast individually for each one if we want. In fact, even in the 647 channel, this channel that's displayed as grayscale here, probably everything we're seeing in this weekly labeled area is just background. Um, but it is possible that these cells that we're seeing here are real. And without saturating this thick layer of cells here, we still have the ability to now get a true relative measurement of molecules in these cells versus this, assuming this is real labeling. And the only way to really to address that is to have some good controls for your antibodies. The last thing I'd like to remind you of is that when we save the image, be sure to do so as a size CZI, or if we were using another microscope, that instrument's format, and this is important because we need each channel of the image saved individually with its original linear bit depth and with the metadata about the image, such as lens use, spatial scale, and exposure time. And you really should be aware of other microscopes on campus which do not do this. Because, for instance, this blue is not truly a blue lookup table. It is a has some green component in it to make it look a little brighter. Sometimes if you want it to look more violet, you also have a red component. This green also appears to have a little bit of a blue component in it, so it couldn't be separated out perfectly. And obviously, this sci fi channel is going to lead into all the other channels if we don't save them individually. Thank you for listening.